possibly, but it's still not in the expanding side, you know, still below 50, although the services have been expanding, but, um, you know, still not, you know, the ideal number, uh, I guess. And also Beijing recently hinted that they might be looking at uh, cutting the reserve requirement ratio of banks, which, which stands at about 20.5 now depending on which banks um, we talk about which is still one of the highest in the world actually many people don't know that and people always are afraid of, of the Chinese banks as an investment uh, opportunity but actually they have got a very very high reserve requirement ratio so China could always cut that um, to uh, if, if they wanted to stimulate the economy but most importantly what we would say regardless of whether they will um, not put in some new stimulus measures etc um, the, the one more important thing for investors to understand is that the property prices have been going through the roof in China, but at the same time, equities have been very, very weak for five years. In fact, Shanghai, the market fell by about 65% over the last five and a half years, whereas Beijing property prices, for example, went up by a factor of four. So relatively speaking, we actually think equity prices are quite attractive now. They were one of the more expensive or most expensive in 2007, but now uh, compared with other global markets, they're one of the cheapest. Well, as investment advisors, firstly, we always like to look at the, you know, um, what it means from an investor's point of view. So when you talk about Russia, one thing I would like to point out, because, you know, similar to Chinese banks, actually, when, when you talk about Russia, everybody just is very fearful and say, you know, oh my goodness, you know, why would you want to invest there? And, but actually, the price earnings ratio in Russia is really the lowest in the world in price book ratios. I mean, the valuations are very, very attractive, even lower than China, and China is already a market quite attractively priced. So from a valuations point of view, we think it is a very good investment opportunity. It's not just all about risk, but also always about price versus risk. So we think it is attractive to um, hold some exposure as part of a diversified portfolio. So that's the one part. As for sanctions, well, there's a degree of risk, obviously. I mean, the US doesn't have much trade with Russia, but Europe does, and they are talking about sanctions. But at the end of the day, um, it, it should be understood that the EU actually exports more goods to Russia than the other way around. And the EU is mostly exports manufactured goods, which Russia could um, also presumably import from China relatively easily. But Russia exports natural gas mostly via pipeline. And at this kind of price um, and at this kind of volume, it's very difficult to, to get that replaced from, from other sources. So the EU might hurt itself potentially even more than um, Russia if they were proceeding with any real sanctions. So we think the risk is relatively limited. There's some risk there, yes, but then we have got Asia also as a growing export market, as we have just seen with the, with the China natural gas deal. And also they're looking at South Korea, Japan, potentially India to expand trade further with other Asian countries. Actually, Vietnam had been doing quite well over the last few years, really improving the, the economy. And that was partly as a result of foreign direct investment you know, from, from countries like China, but also South Korea and, and Taiwan and other places. So, um, well, you know, obviously that, that wasn't very good, this, this recent development. But we would hope that um, things come down again soon and that it will just be a dent and not, you know, major... Um, effect in, in terms of the long-term potential of Vietnam. So and if it does come down, we think actually again medium to long-term Vietnam does actually have quite good potential.